And with that, I'd like to welcome up Matt. Matt Hamilton, who's the head of developer relations at Protocol Labs. And uh, Matt is sort of a giga brain when it comes to Filecoin virtual machine and uh, has a great way of, of articulating and explaining every, all the, the possibilities of the, of the FVM. And um, just, uh, you know, it's a, he's a great guy to learn from. So really uh, appreciate him being here and looking forward to okay. learning about programmable storage deals on, on the FVM. Okay, I think I, uh, I think I got a promotion in that introduction there because I'm not actually the, uh, the the head of developer relations at Protocol Labs. That would be uh, that'd be quite nice. But I'm uh, I'm a member of the uh, FVM uh, developer advocacy team working on the Filecoin virtual machine specifically. So what I'm going to talk about today is programmatically creating storage deals on the Filecoin virtual machine, and. We're going to get into a little bit of code in this. It's going to get a little bit technical on this. I'm actually going to do a live demo showing uh, the full kind of workflow of getting a deal onto Filecoin. And I'm going to cover a little bit about kind of the background of, of, of Filecoin and the Filecoin virtual machine in the, in the process. So the FEM, the Filecoin virtual machine, allows programmability on chain on the Filecoin network. So up until now, Developers have been able to use the Filecoin network, but they've not been able to actually create programmability on the network around the storage kind of primitives that the network offers. And the Filecoin master plan, if you were here for Colin Evren's talk yesterday, uh, this will be familiar. Uh, the Filecoin master plan, three steps. Step one, build the world's largest decentralized storage network. Well, we've, we've pretty much done that and we're still building. Step two, onboard and safeguard humanity's data. Again, we're doing a very good job of that and continue to bring on more data. And this kind of fits under step three, which is bringing compute to the data. So now you've got all this, this data, how do you actually manage the storage of that data? So FEM was launched just over one month ago on the mainnet, it's been in development for roughly two years now. Um, there's uh, about 400,000 filled the Filecoin token kind of locked up in FEM already, a number of contracts on there, and we've got a batch of ecosystem partners that are, that are building on FEM, some of which have been uh, here in the last few days as well. So FEM really solidifies Filecoin as being the layer one network that uniquely powers the open data economy. Right? What do we mean by that? Again, it comes down to this programmability that you are able to actually program the kind of the how, the where, uh, the what, the how much around data storage. So you can build things like data DAOs in which you have a, a decentralized autonomous organization that is actually responsible for funding the storage of, say, a common set of data. And I'm going to give some examples as we, as we go along. But now any developer can deploy smart contracts to Filecoin and you know, work on this, this creation and capture of the value around that data. So the architecture of the FEM, uh, so it is a WASM-based, WebAssembly-based runtime. And then what we've built on top of that is, a, in this, the first instance, a Ethereum-compatible foreign runtime on top of there, the FEVM, the Filecoin Ethereum Virtual Machine. And so that allows you to use your existing tooling. So we're going to meet the developers where they are. You can use your existing tooling and knowledge that you know around Ethereum and Ethereum compatible development and use that uh, on top of Filecoin. But we're using all of the low level primitives of Filecoin within there. So it uses IPLD, which is the data format that a lot of the Filecoin ecosystem uses. Lotus, which is the reference implementation of the Filecoin node software, uh, we've extended that to understand and to, and to be able to handle the Ethereum JSON RPC. So this allows you to immediately use Hard Hat, uh, MetaMask, uh, Foundry, all these kind of tools that you might be familiar with with Ethereum development on Filecoin as well. The way that Filecoin works is it has a number of built-in what are called system actors. And these are smart contracts that are inbuilt to the network that manage the various aspects of storage. So they deal with um, uh, challenging the miners to prove that they still have the data. 
So on the Filecoin network, one of the big things about the Filecoin network is the data is verifiable. So when data is stored on the network, every 24 hours, the storage provider has to prove with a zero knowledge proof that they still actually have that data. And that is what is published onto the blockchain. So the decentralized aspect of the storage is obviously fantastic, but one of the really unique bits is the fact that it is verifiable. And then if you go back to some of the previous talks that have, that have happened today, talking about looking at things like images, you know, 10 years after the fact, this becomes a very, very important uh, part of it. So what are people building? So I'm going to go through a few examples here. Um, NFT storage, some of you may have uh, heard of. NFT storage powers a lot of the big uh, storage, um, a lot of the big NFT marketplaces. And they are using FEM to create permanent storage, so auto-renewing deals. They've got a project called NFT Forever, and the storage deals automatically renew as they come uh, to an end. A company called Glyph that make uh, one of the most popular Filecoin wallets, um, it's where a lot of people know them from, uh, have created a staking pool. So this allows you to actually stake the fill token and allows storage providers, miners, to borrow against that. Because when you set up as a storage provider on the network, one of the things you have to do is put up a large amount of collateral in the fill token. And this allows storage providers to actually borrow that collateral from the market in order to set up and get going. And provides then effectively a, a revenue stream there that uh, holders can then get an interest back on supplying liquidity to the market. And what is interesting with Filecoin is that you can actually prove that a storage provider has a certain revenue coming in to, to, to themselves because of the storage deals that they have agreed to. So if a storage provider has agreed to store, you know, uh, whatever, 10 gigabytes of data for two years and at a certain agreed price, they'll be paid that fee over time, over the duration of that storage deal. And that can be verified and actually, you know, dealt with by a, by a smart contract. Saturn. Saturn is a content distribution network, a decentralized content distribution network that uh, allows faster and more decentralized retrieval of data from IPFS and soon from Filecoin as well. And they're using FEM for the payouts to the node operators. So if you run a node on the Saturn network, depending upon how much data your node serves up, you are actually rewarded, again, in the, in the fill token. And they're using FEM to manage the whole payout process so a node operator can go to a smart contract and say, you know, I want to claim my rewards for this month and, and pay out that way. Data DAOs, I mentioned uh, just now. A couple of examples, LaGrange and SpendDAO. They are dealing with scientific data. So you imagine you might have a large amount of scientific data, images, um, DNA data, whatever it might be, medical data, historical data, that you want to store online, uh, that can be quite costly, right? And uh, data DAOs allow the ability for you to actually have a organization that can vote on the storage of that data, can fund the storage of that data in a more decentralized manner. And one really interesting example is when you combine the on-chain programmability of FEM with the off-chain compute of projects like Bakiyao, which is part of Protocol Labs, which is a decentralized compute platform. So they have a project called LilyPad, which is a bridge between FEM and this uh, compute network. So what you're able to do is have a smart contract um, fire off a job that is then run off-chain. So in this case, they've got, say, stable diffusion, so an image generation uh, neural network. You can supply a prompt from a smart contract that then goes off to be processed off-chain. That comes back with a series of images. Those are stored on IPFS. The IPFS URI is then returned back to the smart contract. The smart contract can then mint an NFT with that IPFS URI in it. So you can kind of go a full circle between both on-chain and off-chain compute with that. I mentioned you can use all your own same tooling that you might be familiar with for any Ethereum development. So MetaMask, very popular uh, browser wallet. Uh, Remix, which is an IDE 
uh, for solidity development. You can use that straight with it. And hard hat, and we'll see hard hat in a minute, um, the use of that. We've got a hard hat starter kit you can go and download uh, from GitHub and uh, actually play around with some of these uh, contracts as well. One of the things we had to do was invent a new address class on uh, the Ethereum network, and this will be apparent in a, in a little bit in the demo. So if you've used Filecoin, you've probably seen addresses that start F1 or F3 uh, normally. So we needed to come up with a new address class, the F4 address class, that can directly translate back and forth from Ethereum-style addresses that start 0x. So that means that you can use the same address in both, say, hard hat um, and you know, Ethereum tooling, and also within Filecoin tooling. And you can actually convert that address, an F4 address, uh, backwards and forwards between those two formats. We have a series of Solidity libraries that allow you to access those inbuilt actors. So these libraries allow you to do things like look up uh, an actor and see whether a storage deal is active or how much uh, storage capacity a, a miner has, for example, on the network. So we're going to get into the demo here. So demo gods be with me. This will be a live demo. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to demonstrate we're going to actually run a complete copy well, not a, a copy, but a complete um, local Filecoin network here on my laptop. And so that will comprise of a Filecoin node, uh, a Filecoin miner, and some software called Boost, which is what the storage providers run. Now, the reason for this, this kind of demo is as you are trying to develop on the Filecoin network and trying to develop within FEM, one of the difficult aspects is you are one part of a two-party conversation that has to happen. So if you create a storage deal and you submit it to the network, you need a storage provider or a miner to accept that deal. And so when you're doing development, that slows down the development process because you're relying upon you know, an additional party to be a part of that. This is going to allow you to run everything locally and play both sides of that. So I'm going to play both a storage client and a storage provider. So what we're going to do is we're going to actually um, set this up from scratch, running on here uh, in just a few minutes. And then I'm going to take you through the process of actually storing some data using a smart contract on the Filecoin network. So here we go. And, right. So in the Filecoin project uh, GitHub repository, there's a project there called Filecoin FEM local net. And what we need to do is just clone that um, down to our machine. So I can say git clone. I can clone that. It's pretty small. Uh, repository and then I can go into that and I can start it up if I, you've got you need to have docker installed and docker compose up it will now start this so this is now starting a completely brand new uh, vanilla network on my laptop so it's starting up Lotus which is the node software and that is going to soon start generating a brand new well it'll start up what's called Lotus Miner and Lotus Miner will then start a new Genesis block. So we have a completely fresh uh, blockchain. That's what Lotus Miner is doing here, um, creating a, a, a new Genesis block. And what we'll have is a completely running network. And like I said, we'll have Boost, which is the software that the miners run. So whilst that's doing that, what I'm going to do is uh, quickly talk a little bit about the storage deal flow on the Filecoin network. So that'll make, hopefully, the, the rest of this make a little bit more sense. So we've got several parties here. And we start off with the client putting some funds in escrow on the chain. So as a storage client, you need to pay for the storage. Uh, that fee gets put into escrow with the storage market actor on chain on the network. Then the client uploads a what's called a car file. A car file, think of it a bit like a zip file. It's an archive, but it's specific to the, the, the Filecoin network. And you need to put that somewhere for the storage provider to fetch it from. And you need to generate that car file. And we'll, I'll show you that in, in a second. But once you've got that car file, you need to put it somewhere for the storage provider to actually fetch to then onboard to Filecoin. The client then sends a storage deal proposal. Um, to boost the software that the, the uh, miners are running with the address of that car file and some other information like how long you want to store it for, 
how much you're willing to pay. Boost checks that the client has some funds and accepts the storage deal proposal. Boost then downloads the car file from the address given, publishes the deal on chain and says, yes, you know, I've got this data and I'm publishing it on chain. And then the client can actually check that this is on chain. Now, this is the existing flow. This is completely sort of manual. This is nothing to do with smart contracts. What we're now going to do is replace some of those steps with a smart contract. This is the, the part where we make this programmable, right? We uh, programmatically create these storage deals. And then some aspects like the client uploading a car file, that's still going to be manual. And the green bits there that are controlled by Boost, those are kind of fairly automated tasks that happen by Boost. And we'll, we'll show those going on as well. So that's the general deal flow of how you get data onto the Filecoin network. And once the miner has it, the miner then goes through a process called sealing, which they convert the data into a format that they can then run these uh, zero-knowledge proofs on to prove that they still have the data. So that should have hopefully finished uh, setting up now. And we can possibly hopefully tell that is because with a bit of luck, we'll have boost running. Yes. So I can connect to, so this is connecting to localhost, my laptop. and. This is the software that the miners run to manage their, their business there. And you can see uh, there's zero deals at the moment. This is completely fresh setup. I'm going to just, first thing I'm going to do is just go into settings, and I'm going to make all storage deals free, just for the brevity of this uh, uh, demo. Then we don't have to worry about um, uh, that side of things. So we've done that. The next thing we need to do is we need to generate this car file to store the data that we want and we need some data to store. So I'm just going to uh, create some data here. Uh, let's see here. Uh, hello, consensus to Austin. FEM is cool. There we go. And now we need to, we need to turn that into a car file. Now, you can do that all locally, but there's actually a tool created by one of our uh, partners called Lighthouse, and they've created a tool that allows you to upload a file, and it will create the car file for you, and it will also generate some of the metadata that you need to supply uh, as part of the process. So now that's uploaded, you can see here, hello, consensus.txt. And it has created the car file, and it has created a number of um, bits of metadata that we need, the CIDs that represent the car file, and what is called the piece, which in, in this case is basically the car file padded out to uh, a power by two uh, size, and the URL of where to get that data from. So what we do now is we need to fund our wallet. So we've created this new network. I need to now put some funds in the wallet because I've got a completely blank wallet. I've actually got uh, MetaMask set up here. And MetaMask, you can see I've got zero funds there, zero T-fill. So I need to copy that address. And I need to tell, um, let's see here, oh, let's go into here. I need to tell Lotus, well, first of all, I need to translate that address into an address that Lotus will understand. So I can run here command. I can ask the Lotus uh, command here to do a stat of that address, and it'll come back and tell me what the Filecoin address is at the top there. Uh, this address, it starts T4. Now what I need to do is I need to ask it to fund that address. So I can say Lotus send. And I'm going to send it 888 fill. So that's the transaction. That is submitted to the blockchain. And remember, this whole blockchain is running locally here on this laptop. Um, it's a test, a test blockchain. Actually, one of the things to note is when you're running it here locally using this local image, it's what's called a 2K network. So it's each sector is 2 kilobytes in size. So that means the maximum you can store on this network is 2 kilobytes of data per transaction. Now, the reason that is, is on the main network, it's about 32 uh, gigabytes in size, or 64 gigabytes. 
the main net miners take about four hours to perform that sealing process on there using beefy servers and GPUs and everything. Obviously, you don't want to be waiting here for four hours for that. So this network is a much smaller um, sector network, which means the process goes a lot quicker. Go back to MetaMask and we see we've got some funds here. We've got 888 TFIL. So the next thing I can do is I can deploy a smart contract to the network. And I mentioned that there is a uh, hard hat um, uh, starter kit we have here. Um, and this hard hat starter kit in includes a number of demo contracts, one of which is this deal client contract, which is the bit that replaces some of that manual deal making process with a smart contract. So I have that here locally, and I can then deploy that uh, to the network. I can tell it to deploy that. So that's now deploying that to the local network. It'll uh, just take a, a minute or so while that deploys. Once we've got that, we can then uh, execute against that smart contract and tell the smart contract we want to store some data. And it will then start the deal-making process, and we can see that kind of go through. So what we need now is there's going to be a fairly scary looking command that we've got to run to interact with it, which we pass all the parameters in. So I've got that here, and I'm just going to fill in some of the details in here from that data, uh, the Lighthouse site where we created our car file. So first of all, so this is deployed. I need the contract address, which is there. Put that in. I need the PCID, which is there. I need the payload CID. There. And the sizes. So it's 231 bytes for the car and 256 for the piece. Uh, 256 there, 231. And I just need that URL there as well. OK, so I can take that command, and I can run that now. I guess my local network. So this is now contacting the smart contract that we have on the blockchain and telling it we want to start a storage deal. And we want to start a storage deal, and uh, these are the details so that it can verify that it's got the right data. It can check the CID, which is a, a hash of the data, to ensure we've got it all. And one of the things as well that we can actually do is we can actually um, We can see the logs of boost, and we'll see when it gets the data um, in here. Actually, I think it's already got it. Yeah, it's got a storage deal there. So this is a bit that you can't see if you were doing this on a public test net, because you can't see the log files of a storage provider. So say something goes wrong, you don't know what's gone wrong. Whereas running this locally, you can see both sides of the conversation, and you can see the storage provider side and the client side. So that has gone ahead and worked. And if we go back to Boost, we should see one deal. So we have a storage deal there. So we can go there. We can click on Deal ID and scroll down and see what's going on. And there's a whole bunch of information about what's going on. But it's basically, it's gone and fetched the file via HTTP. Um, everything's all there. It's checked the CIDs to make sure everything is all matched, everything is all OK. And it says we're ready to publish the deal. Now. Boost will automatically publish it after a set amount of time. I think it's an, an hour in this case. Or I can actually go in and manually publish this deal. So I'm going to say publish now. And that is now going to publish that storage deal. You'll see it's waiting confirmation back from the blockchain uh, that it ha has actually been published. And that will then start the process that the miner is then going to start sealing that data sector as well. And once that is done, then that means that Basically, it is stored on the Filecoin network. It is uh, immutable, and you can then check it from another smart contract and actually see that that 
is there. And then just to kind of close the loop, what we're going to do is we're now going to fetch the data back again uh, from our network just to show you know, that the data is actually there and you can get it back again. So um, there's a tool called um, Lassie, and Lassie allows us to fetch data from IPFS and Filecoin. So what we'd say is Lassie fetch, and then we give it the root CID, this CID here, and we tell Lassie to go and fetch it. Now, we can't just leave it just at that because Lassie is actually very clever and will go ahead and try and contact what's called um, the Interplanetary Network Indexer, IPNI, to try and find where that data is. And because it's running on my laptop here, it's going to have no idea where it is. So I need to tell it manually that actually we want to get it um, from my laptop. So I need to give it a provider, and I can actually get that from here. Uh, actually, not that screen. Here. I can actually get the ID of my uh, local node here, and I can actually then tell it to go and get that uh, from there um, as well. Actually, I think I need uh, just a little bit more detail. Yeah, this here. So copy that. What it says here. Okay. It says being unable to tap for some reason. Oh, I'll just have to type that out. Um, then I need this peer ID. Hopefully, I can copy this. Yes. And that should hopefully, if I've got copied that right, should fetch the data. Yep, it has done. And we've got the data down now. And I can unpack that car file and it's in the directory. It's named after the CID. So I can unpack that. And it'll give me a directory named that. I can go in there and in there is our hello consensus. And there we go. So we've gone right the way around the full circle there. And if we go back to Boost, we'll probably find that Boost is actually telling us that, um, yeah, the ceiling's actually started on that. And if we leave it there for a little while, it will keep going and get to a stage where it's proving. And every 24 hours, it has to prove that it still has the, has the data. Um, otherwise, the miner starts to lose their stake that they've put up as part of this. So there we go. That's kind of going the whole way through the deal flow there. Um, if anybody has any questions, then come and find me afterwards. Um, there's a QR code there that will take you to a bunch of resources. Or you can go to linktree slash Filecoin VM, and uh, there's a whole bunch of technical resources there you can get to. Um, you can also find us on Twitter, and I run a weekly Twitch stream on Thursdays as well, uh, Phil Builder's Twitch stream, so feel free to tune into that. And um, we generally have various partners on. We're going to get Tableland on soon at some point. Uh, to come on and talk about what they're doing as well. So there we go. Thanks very much. Awesome.